Hey there fellow minions of technology, my name is Tim Lee. Welcome to Legacy Studio. Let's talk about cracks. Okay, I gotta admit, I really hope I can turn this video around from that intro. <laughs> Because that didn't start well. Okay, so anyway, let's talk a little bit about uh, plastic cracks, specifically stress cracks, stress fractures in plastic, um, and tell you a little story that I dealt with over the weekend. Uh, as you folks know, uh, if you follow my channel at all, you know right now I'm a big fan of my Sony FDR AX53. This thing is a beautiful... Um, a beautiful camera. I love it. Came with an awful lot of problems because I bought it used and uh, apparently so whoever had this previously before me did not take the best care of it. Now in saying that, as I've been looking over the camera, I thought I had fixed all those issues until over the weekend I was setting up this new setup here. If you like it, I got a camera directly in front of me here that uh, takes the main camera position, which is right now the Panasonic HCV770, and then my secondary camera camera, which is more of just a, a, a side comparison to what I'm doing as I'm talking to the main camera. I figured it was a little cinematic. I felt like it looked kind of nice. Also highlighted this awesome number over here. Thank you so much for that, by the way. Now, in saying that, um, I, I had this camera set up as my main camera, which is where the Panasonic is now. And as I would put it on that tripod, I felt like the camera was moving and wiggling an awful lot. And I was going, why on earth is that? Um, and so I'm looking over my stand. I have a microphone stand set up that's actually holding the camera because uh, it doesn't need to be anything as long as it stays in one place. It's good. But it was wiggling a lot. And I'm going, why is this wiggling so much? Well, as I kept an eye on where the wiggling was happening, it was actually happening from the bottom of the camera, which means that the plastic on the bottom of the camera had become quite weak. And as I took a closer look at that, I found stress fractures going all through the plastic um, right around the place where you would put it on a tripod. And I just, I'm just not happy about that because I mean, if you know anything about this camera and about its construction, which unfortunately I know a little bit more than I care to admit because I've taken this camera apart I think four times now. Um, you'll, you'll know that there is a metal bracket inside the camera that's held in by one screw. That metal bracket is for putting it on tripods. But that metal bracket is screwed into that through the plastic. And the plastic on the bottom of this camera, I can press it in with my finger. Uh, and it's not exactly structurally integral, if you know what I mean. So in saying that, I got a bit frustrated by that. And I'm going, okay, how am I going to fix this stress fracturing, especially before I go on this trip that I'm about to take with my wife, because we're about to take the camper out and go for a little vacation away for just a few days. And, uh, you know, a little break from the whole coronavirus situation. And I can't have my camera breaking apart, literally plastic shattering while it's on a tripod and then drop the camera and break it even worse than it already is broken. I just, I can't do that. So what's the plan of action? Well, I looked online and I figured out what part I would have to buy to completely replace that issue. So this bottom panel here goes all the way around to the side of the camera all the way up here. So this whole panel has to be replaced. About $50, $60 later, it's on its way in the mail, unfortunately. Um, and saying that, I'll make a video on that. You know, I just share my life with you. So at the point in time that it's time to rip this camera apart, I'll set up a camera. We'll actually take it apart together, and you can see the process of trying to do that repair just in case if anyone out there has to do the same repair. But I needed something in the interim. What could I do in the interim that would be a good fix uh, for this situation? And, you know, I think a lot of us would think the same thing. We're thinking super glues. We're thinking um, yeah, crazy glue, craggle, if you liked the Lego movie. Uh, and we're thinking, okay, so maybe I can use some of that, and maybe I can build up a layer of super glue that's going to make a, a plastic plastic layering. But the thing about super glue is super glue only works best when it's a piece of material with super glue and another piece of material 
sandwiched together. That is where super glue does its job well. If it's super glue touching super glue, it it it's it's practically useless same thing with crazy glue and all that stuff so i was like what am i going to come up with epoxy was my first guess so i went, went over to ace and i was looking at all these different epoxies and i finally landed on this guy this is jb plastic bonder jb weld plastic bonder it was like eight or nine bucks for this tube uh dries in 15 minutes and then is ready to be sanded within 30 minutes apparently and i would say an hour um, in saying that, I thought, okay, well, maybe, maybe I can find a way to build up the layers uh, using this JB Weld and just somehow make my own plastic base to the camera. So that's exactly what I did. I bought that, and I'm going to go ahead now, and since you've probably already seen it, you can kind of see on the side camera there a little bit, this buildup of material here. That has worked phenomenally. It's worked really, really well with a couple little caveats that I'll share with you as, as I keep talking about this here. Um, first off, I want you to see the height, and I want you to see how it's kind of globbed up. I haven't tried sanding it down because, honestly, I don't want to mess up the finish of the rest of the camera. I might try, and I might tape it off with some painter's tape and try and sand it down ever so slightly, but I don't want to mess up the integrity of what I've already built. In saying that, though, doing this means that you might have a serious problem. And that serious problem comes in when you take a tripod with a rather tiny thread on the top. And, and let me get to a camera that has autofocus. Um, right there, if I do that there, you can see that there's only about three or four threads here on the top of this. It's, that's a very small area to mount your camera on. And if you already have an uneven amount of goop on there, and it's already not allowing this tripod to go all the way down, one to I would say I might be getting two two and a half threads connected there to do this so that means I got to be a lot more careful if I go selfie with this thing and I do this kind of a deal uh, still works great um, the plastic seems to be holding strong and actually stronger than it was um, I do see it flexing as I do this but that's not something that's actually going to fix that's just the nature of this camera but the, the thing is I, I just, I, this is a warning for you. This is a warning for you. With with any camera, you definitely want to make sure, at least like here's with my RX100 Mark V, that's a metal bolt right there. And it doesn't look like any plastic around it is helping to keep it secured. It looks like it's secured directly to the body. And technically so is this guy, but only with one individual little teeny tiny screw. And it has to go through to the plastic to get to it. So it fractures along the way so if you're gonna put this on a tripod be careful and and just your best bet is to put it on a tripod but just be careful because when it comes down to it that's a fragile area of this camera unfortunately and it's the nature of the beast now obviously this camera is used I don't know how old it is I don't know how abused it was used until I got it but uh, I'm trying to baby it back to health come on little girl you can do it and uh, we we're trying we're trying our very best to get along, you know. She just needs a little TLC. But in saying that, I want you just to be aware of some of the trials and tribulations I'm going through with this camera. So that as you're stepping into the world of camcorders, and maybe you're thinking the Sony uh, AX33, 43, 53, whatever the case may be. Uh, if you come into some of these issues, um, yes, there's replacement parts, but they're like 60 bucks. That's expensive for a piece of plastic. Um, where maybe you can do some kind of JB Weld kind of fix like that and get that working maybe the way that you were thinking a little better. And so I figured I would just share this story with you as I share all my stories with you because I just love creating content for you guys in general. So once again, that's the JB, JB Weld Plastic Bonder, and it comes in two colors, black and tan. So if you're looking for something like that, then um, Ace had it. I'm sure everywhere will pretty much have it. Uh, and I paid eight or nine dollars and I live in rural Montana so yeah you'll probably find it pretty much wherever you are so that's gonna do it for this video God bless you guys I'll see you next time right here on Legacy Studio it seemed to work pretty well uh, just be warned that this is just the nature of the beast with buying used so expect it and uh, be ready to nurse it back to health and that's the best thing you can do so that's talking about cracks and I hope that I helped you fix a couple of yours because there's very few YouTube videos here on YouTube that actually talk about how to fix plastic cracks except to do more damage in the process 
and that's not really my style. Special thank you to 1,710 subscribers. We hit the 700 mark over the weekend, and I deeply appreciate it. You guys rock. I love you all so much. We'll see you next time right here on Legacy Studio. Y'all behave yourselves, and if you don't, make sure you get it on camera. It's a lot funnier that way. Just make sure to keep it clean. God bless y'all. We'll see you next time. Bye.